Hello and welcome. This video is intended to follow up on the previous um, Cooler Master NR200P build that I did. Um, in that build there were quite a number of challenges that were faced and I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about that. Um, but before that uh, I'd like to explain a couple of things that uh, uh, we did uh, in that video. As you may have noticed the build itself was actually uh, done directly on this desk uh, which is a very hardy surface so I'm, I'm actually well aware that uh, this is suitable for doing the build but for people in general, I would recommend using something like uh, this to protect your workspace as the uh, back of the motherboard has got very sharp pins which um, can damage uh, your desk or, or uh, whatever surface that you're uh, using. Um, the other thing to kind of just mention is I do use an iFixit kit, uh, which is a, a very nice uh, screwdriver set. Um, Good tools make a hell of a difference when it comes to um, doing the build. I'm aware of people rounding off screws and all, doing all sorts of funny things and having to come and help them to get out of a sticky situation when it comes to that. Um, another key thing that I have to mention is when using the um, Cooler Master NR200P with the tempered glass um, and you, you're most likely going to be uh, vertical mounting the GPU. Uh, by doing so you will end up using the riser cable. That riser cable is only compatible with PCIe version 3. So be very aware. Uh, if you were to go through the exact build that I did and test on a bench, open bench, and um, test all your components, everything would work. But the moment you put it into the case, if you had forgotten to um, modify the BIOS, to bring the PCIe version down to from auto or version 4 by default um, down to version 3 then you will have no display when you try to boot up. This is a very common problem that people do come across and if, you're, if your system is fully built then unfortunately you've got, you've got two options. One is to um, somehow dismantle and get your GPU directly connected to the motherboard in order to power on, go into the BIOS, make the changes and then save and then go ahead and remount with the vertical razor cable. Right, let's go into the BIOS and have a look at those settings now. So turning on the PC, um, hit delete to enter the BIOS. That's the PC boot. Okay, hit delete while entering the while the PC is booting. Okay, into the BIOS. From here, um, the option for uh, the PCIe is under, let me just have another look, quick look here, I made some notes. Uh, it's under advanced, under onboard devices configuration. This is for the ASUS board. And right there you've got a PCIe X16 underscore one mode. That is set to auto. Right now I've actually got the uh, GPU connected directly to the motherboard, so I put that back to auto. Uh, but if you were to use the riser cable, you would have to change that to Gen 3 and then go ahead and if hit F10, save the changes and off you go. That would correct the issue. Another thing I'd like to mention is uh, when, you are do when you're doing the build, especially when you're mounting the cooler for the CPU, whether it's a heat sink and fan or an all-in-one uh, liquid cooler, do go through the manual because the mountings for these things nowadays are very much um, they're very customized for the brand and uh, knowing exactly which pieces to use helps you in the long run. Otherwise you'll end up doing, you'll end up mounting the thing, having a look, it may not look correct, then you have to dismount and then remount again. Uh, that's a very big waste of time, so as you may have seen uh, in my build, I did go through the manual and I was reading on how to uh, mount that particular uh, all-in-one cooler. I have mounted quite a number of all-in-one coolers and everyone has, every um, vendor seems to have a different uh, take on how they do their mounting and, um, and even uh, configuration. Um, as we can see here, the build itself has actually changed um, in, from the original build that you saw in the previous uh, video series, where I've actually mounted the radiator on the side here with the bracket uh, provided and we mounted the GPU at the bottom and instead of using the tempered glass we went back to the uh, mesh side panel 
The reason for this is to let air coming through on the site um, so that there's a decent airflow for the system. I did do an, a number of quick tests. Um, not sure whether this was something that people would have found a lot of interest in, but I did an, a number of tests. So as you may have noticed, in the original configuration, I mounted the uh, radiator at the bottom here with the fan set to exhaust. That was intentional to get some tests done to show readings. The uh, graphics card was vertical mounted on the side here to showcase the um, RTX 3080 that we have in this case. With the fans set to exhaust, uh, what was happening is they, the uh, top fans were also exhaust, so the, the air was coming in naturally from behind. Um, not a great airflow scenario there, which is fine. Um, it was done purely on purpose to do some tests. After that initial test, uh, which showed that the thermals were not great, I flipped the uh, fans on the radiator down below, and my findings were that um, the thermals did improve quite substantially um, since, the, since now uh, the fans were set to intake. What was happening there was the fans were sucking air through the AIO, fresh air from the bottom here. Fresh air is going in, cooling down the uh, radiator and then throwing the air straight up into the case to the graphics card above which was also helping to keep the graphics card cool and out of the top. So you've got that, direct, that one directional flow of air, which is great in this particular case. That is, to me, the only real way to uh, configure this case. Um, the downside to having the radiator down at the bottom was that <coughs> after running the uh, system, you can actually hear the, uh, the AIOs pump so the pump on the, um, on the CPU uh, socket itself, uh, making a little bit of a gargling sound. Um, what that is, is basically there are some uh, air bubbles that are trapped in the AIO. It is a sealed unit, so you cannot really um, modify that without uh, voiding warranty and, and um, potentially uh, cutting the cable and, and re reconnecting. Um, because of that, I felt that the, uh, the particular cooler that we've selected isn't great for that scenario. So I went with the next setup that you see here, which is mounting the radiator on the side and bringing the uh, graphics card onto the bottom. The, as you may have seen in the video, mounting the graphics card on the side here was very, very tight. It just about fit. However, if you mount the graphics card at the bottom, there is a great slot here where you can actually slide the graphics card in directly. For this very large graphics card, this is the ideal way to mount them. Don't try to put them in through the top, if they're, especially if they're tight like this one. Just slide them in through the bottom here and they will go very easily. Okay, so with this configuration, um, I reran the thermals. The CPU is slightly higher, but not much, I think by two degrees. Um, but the CPU is definitely a lot cooler uh, as the fresh air is coming now from the side, therefore there's no restriction from the airflow coming in. And uh, overall the system seems to run a lot better. Um, I did try to uh, put the temper glass on and of course the result is very obvious because holding my hand here I can feel that there's a suction going on there, the temper glass blocks that completely the, um, the thermals on the CPU just skyrocket. So that's not ideal, which is why eventually we went back to using the, um, the mesh. Uh, the tempered glass, for me personally, I feel that uh, it's, a, it's a nice touch, but it's really for those people that uh, want to do their own custom water cooling. Um, by that, well, by that I mean um, actually having the uh, a individual radiator with their own custom piping uh, and the pump, and in that scenario you can position things a lot better to um, suit the environment, and, and of course you can control the amount of liquid that goes into the system, therefore avoiding the uh, gargling sounds that, you, that we experience in the uh, sealed unit. Ah, one other note to make. Um, if you have an existing system and you're looking to upgrade to the next generation uh, Ryzen Zen 3, 
Um, there is a high chance that your existing motherboard will not be suitable for that CPU right away. What you will, you will have to do in that case would be to go to the, mother, the manufacturer's website, download the latest BIOS, most likely copy that to the USB stick, go into the BIOS and flash the uh, BIOS to the latest version. That will um, or should uh, support the latest Zen 3 CPUs if you're running um, the B550 motherboards or the X570s. Uh, the B450s, there is a lot of talk about them being supported in the future, but as of now, from what I'm aware, they're not officially supported. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any further questions about anything talked about in this video, do let me know. And of course, thank you very much for all the uh, views previously on the um, build itself and the comments there. Thank you.